the respiratory conducting passages are divided into the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract includes the nose, pharynx, and larynx. The lower respiratory tract consists of the trachea, bronchial tree, and lungs. These tracts open to the outside and are lined with mucous membranes. In some regions, the membrane has hairs that help filter the air. Other regions may have cilia to propel mucus. Pharynx The pharynx, commonly called the throat, is a passageway that extends from the base of the skull to the level of the sixth cervical vertebra. It serves both respiratory and digestive systems by receiving air from the nasal cavity and air, food, and water from the oral cavity. Inferiorly, it opens into the larynx and esophagus. The pharynx is divided into three regions according to location, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx, or hypopharynx. The nasopharynx is the portion of the pharynx that is posterior to the nasal cavity and extends inferiorly to the uvula. The oropharynx is the portion of the pharynx that is posterior to the oral cavity. The most inferior portion of the pharynx is the laryngopharynx that extends from the hyoid bone down to the lower margin of the larynx. The upper part of the pharynx, or throat, lets only air pass through. Lower parts permit air, foods, and fluids to pass. The pharyngeal, palatine, and lingual tonsils are located in the pharynx. They are also called Valderiar's ring. The retromolar trigone is the small area behind the wisdom teeth. Larynx and trachea The larynx, commonly called the voice box or glottis, is the passageway for air between the pharynx above and the trachea below. It extends from the fourth to the sixth vertebral levels. The larynx is often divided into three sections, sublarynx, larynx, and supralarynx. It is formed by nine cartilages that are connected to each other by muscles and ligaments. The larynx plays an essential role in human speech. During sound production, the vocal cords close together and vibrate as air expelled from the lungs passes between them. The false vocal cords have no role in sound production, but help close off the larynx when food is swallowed. The thyroid cartilage is the Adam's apple. The epiglottis acts like a trapdoor to keep food and other particles from entering the larynx. The trachea, commonly called the windpipe, is the main airway to the lungs. It divides into the right and left bronchi at the level of the fifth thoracic vertebra, channeling air to the right or left lung. The hyaline cartilage in the tracheal wall provides support and keeps the trachea from collapsing. The posterior soft tissue allows for expansion of the esophagus, which is immediately posterior to the trachea. The mucous membrane that lines the trachea is ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium, similar to that in the nasal cavity and nasopharynx. Goblet cells produce mucus that traps airborne particles and microorganisms, and the cilia propel the mucus upward, where it is either swallowed or expelled. Bronchi, bronchial tree, and lungs. In the mediastinum, at the level of the fifth thoracic vertebra, the trachea divides into the right and left primary bronchi. The bronchi branch into smaller and smaller passageways until they terminate in tiny air sacs called alveoli. The cartilage and mucous membrane of the primary bronchi are similar to that in the trachea. As the branching continues through the bronchial tree, the amount of hyaline cartilage in the walls decreases until it is absent in the smallest bronchioles. As the cartilage decreases, the amount of smooth muscle increases. The mucous membrane also undergoes a transition from ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium to simple cuboidal epithelium to simple squamous epithelium. The alveolar ducts and alveoli consist primarily of simple squamous epithelium, which permits rapid diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Exchange of gases between the air in the lungs and the blood in the capillaries occurs across the walls of the alveolar ducts and alveoli. Lungs 
The two lungs, which contain all the components of the bronchial tree beyond the primary bronchi, occupy most of the space in the thoracic cavity. The lungs are soft and spongy because they are mostly air spaces surrounded by the alveolar cells and elastic connective tissue. They are separated from each other by the mediastinum, which contains the heart. The only point of attachment for each lung is at the hilum, or root, on the medial side. This is where the bronchi, blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves enter the lungs. The right lung is shorter, broader, and has a greater volume than the left lung. It is divided into three lobes, and each lobe is applied by one of the secondary bronchi. The left lung is longer and narrower than the right lung. It has an indentation called the cardiac notch on its medial surface for the apex of the heart. The left lung has two lobes. Each lung is enclosed by a double-layered serous membrane called the pleura. The visceral pleura is firmly attached to the surface of the lung. At the hilum, the visceral pleura is continuous with the parietal pleura that lines the wall of the thorax. The small space between the visceral and parietal pleura is the pleural cavity. It contains a thin film of serous fluid that is produced by the pleura. The fluid acts as a lubricant to reduce friction as the two layers slide against each other, and it helps to hold the two layers together as the lungs inflate and deflate. Alveoli Alveoli are an important part of the respiratory system, whose function it is to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules to and from the bloodstream. These tiny, balloon-shaped air sacs sit at the very end of the respiratory tree and are arranged in clusters throughout the lungs. Structure Alveoli are tiny, balloon-shaped structures and are the smallest passageway in the respiratory system. The alveoli are very thin, allowing the relatively easy passage of oxygen and carbon dioxide, or CO2, between the alveoli and blood vessels called capillaries. One cubic millimeter of lung tissue contains around 170 alveoli. While the total number can vary from one person to the next, there are literally millions within the human lungs, spanning a surface area of roughly 70 square meters. Cells of the alveoli The alveoli are made up of two different types of cells that have different functions. Type 1 pneumocytes are the cells that are responsible for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Type 2 pneumocytes perform two important functions. They are responsible for repairing damage to the alveolar lining and also secrete surfactant. There are also many immune cells known as alveolar macrophages in the alveoli. Macrophages are essentially the garbage trucks of the immune system, and phagocytize, or eat, debris they come across. They are responsible for cleaning up any particles that are not caught by the cilia or mucus in the upper respiratory tract, as well as dead cells and bacteria. Function Alveoli are the end point of the respiratory system, which starts when we inhale air into the mouth or nose. The oxygen-rich air travels down the trachea and then into one of the two lungs via the right or left bronchus. From there, the air is directed through smaller and smaller passages, called bronchioles, past the alveolar duct until it finally enters an individual alveolus. Alveoli are lined by a fluid layer known as surfactant, which maintains the shape and surface tension of the air sac. By maintaining surface tension, there is more surface area through which oxygen and CO2 molecules can pass. It is at this junction that oxygen molecules diffuse through a single cell in an alveolus, and then a single cell in a capillary to enter the bloodstream. At the same time, carbon dioxide molecules, a byproduct of cellular respiration, are diffused back into alveolus, where they are expelled out of the body through the nose or mouth. Diffusion of oxygen from the alveoli to capillaries occurs because the concentration of oxygen is lower in the capillaries. Similarly, carbon dioxide diffuses from the capillaries to the alveoli, where the concentration of carbon dioxide is lower. During inhalation, alveoli expand, as the negative pressure in the chest is created by contraction of the diaphragm. During exhalation, the alveoli recoil, or spring back, as the diaphragm relaxes. 
We hope this video was helpful. Check out our other videos for additional topics. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment or request a video topic below. Thanks for watching.